or Konnichiwa and welcome to all of our basketball fans. Welcome now to the FIBA Basketball World Cup Asian Qualifiers. It is game day one. Our host Japan will be taking on the visitors China in what promises to be a clash of the titans here. Two teams with some of the biggest reputations in basketball here in the FIBA Asia zone. But right now, it's all about the Basketball World Cup. Well, they will be playing tomorrow, of course, local time. Then you can see we'll be in the evening a little bit later. Right now, we are tipping off midday here in Sendai in the wonderful city here in Japan. It's time to well, ladies and gentlemen, it was only a couple of months ago that these two teams, they already met and played each other in back-to-back -back games in the FIBA Asia Cup qualifiers in the Philippines bubble. And right now, they're going to kick it off here in the 2023 Basketball World Cup qualifiers. We're going to take a look at some of the players from this team. Now, both these teams are featuring some great players from their domestic leagues and the likes of China. A lot of great players featuring from the CBA. But Katsuki 5, their players featuring for one of the hottest basketball leagues in the world, one of the up-and-coming basketball leagues, the B-League. Starting with Team Japan! Well, Katsuki 5, Japan's national team. The players to look out on this team. Some top, top players, of course. Well, they can see number one, Takumi Saito playing for the Nagoya Diamond Dolphins. Yuki Togashi, of course, number two. There he is, one of the quickest guards in Asia. Led the Chiba Jets to their first ever B League championship last season. And there's Makoto Hiyajima, one of the greatest shooters. Well, that man right there, Kosuke Takuichi, also a member of the Tsunami of Brex, featured for Japan back in the 2006 World Championship in which they hosted. Well, a lot of players they can go to. They can see Yuma Fuji for the Kawasaki Brave Funders. And there is the big man, six foot nine, Abby Kakoki Sheffer, playing for the Mikawa Seahorses this season, only 23 years of age. Well, there's Tenketsu Haramoto, who's a member of the Japanese Olympic team, and the new coach, the man that's going to stir the ship forward, Tom Hovas, the American, who briefly played for the Atlanta Hawks in the NBA during his playing career, but has since been coaching in Japan. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to take a look at the visitors, one of the powerhouses, 17-time champions of the FIBA Asia Cup. There you can see Team China. Well, there is their young guard, of course, playing for the Guangdong Dongguan Bank players, Xu Jie, and Xu Jie. Only stands at 5 11, but there you can see his partner in the backcourt, Zhao Jiwei, playing for the Anning Flying Leopards. 26 years of age, very, very tough player. Well, number 17, of course, there you can see Sun Ming Hui playing for the Zhejiang Lions, another tough player they brought into the mix up there. But number 33 is one of their top scorers, Wu Tian. He plays with Zhejiang, Zhou Chu Club as well. It is going to be a very, very tough match. It has number 55, the legend, De Jun Han. And now he will stand for the wonderful anthems of these two beautiful nations. The national anthem of Japan. The National Anthem of People's Republic of China.
Players, please start your warm up. Well, now we'll get set to introduce our officials off to the two wonderful and beautiful national anthems of these two possible countries. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a little look at our officials for tonight's game. Again, we're very proud to say we have some of the finest officials here in World Basketball. They've done an excellent job in all of our competitions, and they'll continue to do so here tonight in Sendai, Japan. And then our officials for tonight's game, our officials are coming from Indonesia, Korea, and Singapore. Well, from Indonesia, we have Haja Jalaradri, from Korea, we have Kyung Hwan Lee. And from Singapore, we have Chun Wing Leong. Well, again, we thank you the hard work and loyalty of all of our officials. They've done an excellent job in all of our competitions. And tonight, it's Japan versus China as we make a debut opening for these two teams for 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup qualifiers. Well, we're going to take a look at the starting lineups for these two teams. And there you can see Joe Chi, one of the top international players here in the FIBA Asia zone. Again, he was dominant for China's display in which they won the second game against Japan where he played in. Well, no doubt we're probably going to see Makoto Hiyajima and Yuki Tagashi. Well, there is Hiyajima right there with Utsunami of Brex. I mean, he is simply, if you get him open on the wings, he can hit those perimeter shots. A very dominant three-point shooter. Well, there's Aki Chambers now. Aki Chambers, six foot three. They've only just brought into the national team for this window. And Taketsu Harimoto, the man who was with the Olympic basketball team, in the Tokyo Olympics. Well, Tsugashi, Makoto Hiyajima, and Aki Chambers, they make up the backcourt. Tenkoto Harimoto, this is a very small lineup as he's only six foot six. And Abby Schaffer will play power forward. Now, he's going to be the biggest player on the court. So it's quite interesting. As Coach Tom Havas there. You can see Evans is their next biggest player. So Japan are going to have to go with speed and perimeter shooting if they're going to pull up a victory here tonight. I remember if they get that man, some good looks. It could be a good night there. You can see Coach Tom Havas of Japan just stepping into the role now, having spent many years coaching the women's national team in Japan, also the club basketball in the B League. So it's a big time for him. And now we'll take a look at the starting lineups here of China. No doubt we're going to see Joe Chi in the starting lineup. I mean, this guy, very athletic, very agile, very mobile. And when he gets the ball in his hands, can make a lot of things happen. Zhao Ji Wei, there is the legend coach of China, Du Fang, one of the partners of Yao Ming back in the day. Well, they're going to go with Hu Jin Cho along with Zhou Qi. I mean, that's a big lineup there. And Cho Peng as well, standing at six foot nine. Now, Cho Peng, last time he played against China, he was shooting the ball very, very well from the perimeter. So another play. I mean, China, we talk about this size, but this team can play as Zhao Ji Wei will play the point guard role for his team. And for China, for them, they hold the record for the most amount of champions in the FIBA Asia Cup. And Du Feng knows that he needs to get his players to the World Cup. More importantly, he needs to put Chinese basketball back on the map. Well, they last won the FIBA Asia Cup back in 2015. And again, after a very disappointing home campaign in the 2019 FIBA World Cup, in which they lost against Venezuela, which was a deciding game whether to get them into the qualification round. That loss at home in front of their home crowd. These Chinese players have not forgotten. These Japanese players, they'll look forward to hosting the next FIBA World Cup. And they'll want to start their campaign with a win tonight here in Sendai, Japan. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for joining us here in Sendai, Japan. Don't go anywhere, because right now, Japan, who will be one-third host of the 2023 FIBA World Cup, they're taking on China. It's live. It is the Basketball World Cup qualifiers. Don't go anywhere, as we are set for tip.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are set for tip. Joe Chi is going to jump here. With Abby Koki Schaffer. The tip is up, and business is underway. And we'll be trying to get the first possession of the game here. Now we can see already Joe Chi going right at him. Gets his own rebound, goes over the second time, and that's going to be a problem this evening for Japan. It's the size and physicality of the Chinese national team. And Joe Chi gets an early bucket there in the low block as Tenketsu Haramoto is looking up. Get a handoff here. Turns a pump fake now, kicks it on, turns it over. As Zhao Ji Wei comes up with it. Zhao Ji Wei up against Yuki Togashi, lays it up, but he can't get it. And now, this is where Japan needs to be much quicker in transition. Tenketsu Haramoto kicks out. Yuki Togashi from downtown can't get it. And China there struggle to secure the rebound. So it will be baseline ball now to Japan. Well, look at Joe Chi hits. Goes up once against Shafa, gets his own rebound. That's too easy. Well, Joe Chi, a phenomenal basketball player. Highly regarded as the future leader of this Chinese national team. Throws it down low now to Avi Schaffer. Well, Schaffer looking for some ball movement. Well, does he throw it away? Can Tagashi keep it alive? A few seconds left on the shot clock. Got to throw it up. Can't get it. Well, Japan are going to have to settle for the perimeter shots as much as possible tonight. But again, the movement off the ball has to be better. And here comes the pick and roll sequence now. Zhao Jiwei all the way, reverse it. And he makes it look easy. But that's a tough, tough play there. Well, that was Guo Ailun there. And there's the pick and pop play to try another three pointer. They can't get it. Well, if Japan starts settling too much for three pointers, it's going to be a long night for them. Comes off one screen now with Joe Chi. Gets caught in double team. Zachary Chambers now tries to pick up the loose man in the lane. Great help side defense. Puts it up. Doesn't get it. Another offensive rebound. And Joe Chi right now is simply unstoppable. And Coach Du Fang. Looks on to his players. So Kensu Harimoto gets a reverse. Aki Chambers in the corner takes a three-pointer. And Japan now come out 0 for 4 from downtown. Comes up one screen now. They find him again. This time, Japan able to collapse on the defense and force Jochi to turn it over. Already, they're going to bring Evans into the game. And I wonder if they're going to bring Schaffer out or... Well, he's done that. So Evans comes out, comes in, excuse me, and Schaffer comes out of the game. Well, Evans is only six foot eight, but again. Well, Japan right now struggling to get the ball inbound against China. Well, the full court pressure that you can see from. Zhao Ji Wei not allowing Yuki Tsugashi to get the ball inbound. Tsugashi now on the ball. Sent to Tenketsu Haramoto. Haramoto now, he'll step back, he'll try a three point. Tenketsu Haramoto can't get it. And China will push this one. And we go down low right away. Has it back down in the low block, goes up with it, gets fouled, and now he will go to the free throw line. Foul is on Tenketsu Haramoto. Of course, Tom Havas now is going to call timeout. And already you're seeing that the size is causing Japan a few problems. I just wonder now what kind of change the Japanese national team going to make on defense. They're going to have to double in the low block and force China to kick the ball out to the open shooters, but they can see Japan five three-point field goals taken only. Already 0 for 5 from the perimeter. Again, you can see Joe Chi there with the one post. With Devin. Look, I don't think he needs to even jump off the ground to reach the basket. Yeah. 
Joe Chi now enjoying his time. And they left the CBA, of course, now playing for the East Melbourne Phoenix in the National Basketball League in Australia. Knocks down the first free throw. You gotta wonder, of course, with China, you know, do they want to play this perimeter game all night long, or do they want to get Japan in foul trouble and just try to cement themselves in the low block and force Japan to foul? Here comes the full court pressure now. Gashi gives this one up to Tenketsu Harimoto. Now Chambers now has to try and help out as much as possible here in the backcourt. Evans gets a handoff. Kujima double crossover. We'll try to give off to Evans and kick out to Harimoto. Got to get a shot off. Harimoto puts it up. Off the backboard for Tenketsu Harimoto. Finally gets the first two points of the game now for the Katsuki's five. Now here, Jima, heavy defense. Here comes double team. And the coach of here, Jima, trying to grab in the ball against, against Guo Ailun there, but in the end, committed the foul. For a handoff now. He comes to pick and roll now. Kick this one out. He's wide open underneath the bass. He's got to go to work. And again, it, oh, he missed it. But China right now just getting every offensive rebound. Splits the defense all the way. Uncontested. Well, at the moment, Japan's defense. A lot of questions being asked. Haramoto now gets a handoff here with Togashi. And that is left wide open, takes a three-point shot, is up, it's no good. Nobody going for an offensive rebound. Well, here comes the handoff now. Joe Payne checks into the game here for China. And look for the pick and roll sequence, there's a lob under the basket. Simply unstoppable. Joe T has come ready to play. Right now, China in total control of this game at the moment. Tsukashi gives it back to a play. Aki Chambers turns it over, and now it's a two on one. What do we have here? One pass, two pass, three. Throws it down for Shesiani. A little bit of showtime. Jungwa Lencho. Karamoto now crosses over, kicks this one out to Aki Chambers. Chambers goes baseline. That's nice Tsukashi. Good ball movement. Well, Hiyajima, they want him to get these shots, and Makoto Hiyajima can't get it. Well, there's a love pass under the basket, secures him off, jump hook. Doesn't get the bucket, but he gets fouled. And now he's going to the free throw line here. The foul is on Makoto Hiyajima, and that's his second personal foul of the game. Well, two free throws now to Hu Jinchou. Well, all he has to do tonight is, again, just cement himself, find that position in the low block, and just demand the basketball. Well, doesn't make the free throw. Japan now in almost five minutes of play, only two points. We'll give this one up, and here comes the handoff. Well, Evans goes down the lane. Evans gets rejected. Well, Joe Chi said, get out of here. Well, here comes the isolation play. Goes down the middle, kicks out. Good ball movement. Probably could do one more pass. Pulls up for the mid-range, doesn't get it. China with another offensive rebound. Goes in, hangs out of bounds, doesn't get it. This time, Tenketsu Haramoto secures a rebound. 
Karamotsuda gives this one up to get a three in transition. The three is up. It's no good. And Japan now, that was Yudai Nishida. Trying to set up more perimeter shots, but again, just not dropping at the moment. And Jochi, he can make these. He takes a three-pointer. Doesn't get it, but another offensive rebound. Tries to muscle his way in and out. Goes up. Doesn't get it. Another offensive rebound. And this time they'll slow it down hit. They'll try to go down low. And Japan collapsed on defense. There's a the kick out. Goes down the middle. All the way. Splits the defense. Doesn't get it. Jochi with the offensive rebound. And this time he gets it. Well, he is playing for an MVP right now. At the moment, Japan again settling for more perimeter shots and getting the same result. Nothing dropping for them. And here comes the screen now. Goes down the middle, takes an extra step, and I think they're going to call a foul there. That was a smart play by, by Guo Ailun there, just making the contact. And that was on Tenketsu Harimoto, so... Abby Koki Shaffa has to come back into the game. Well, it's a bit better now for Japan because now they've got Shaffa and they also have Evans in the game, which gives them a bit more size. It's called a double team now. And the big fella left wide open and the legend has checked into the game now for China. De Jun Hun hangs in the air, doesn't get it. Another offensive rebound. And at the moment, Japan just cannot secure the rebounds. Now foul is on Furukawa. Great penetration there, but again, Shot goes up, everybody's looking at the ball, nobody goes to box out. I mean, he gets his own rebound. He makes the first one. Well, Jal Ray now, there you can see him at the free throw line. It's his first point of the game, and again, question now will be for Dufang is how often he wants to rotate his players in and out of the game. Well, doesn't get the second one. That's Kumi Sato now here on the point guy roll. All right, turns it over. Now, what do we have here? Transition. He's going to lay this one up. Put the hands in the passing lane again. It's another turnover. Leads to a fast rate bucket. Nishida for another three-pointer, same result. When Japan get the offensive rebound, another chance hit. Well, good ball movement. And they try another three-pointer. Three is up, and they still can't get it. And China now, no need to rush this one. All the momentum going in their favor. Well, here comes the handoff now. Tries to go down the middle. Pulls up in the mid-range. Oh, a little bit short on that one. And the AC just got turned on because this arena just got a little bit more chilly. And you can see Du Fang. I mean, he was a fantastic basketball player and a perfectionist of, as a coach, as you can see. There's the handoff now, goes down the middle, bit of contact, that's much better. And that's what Japan has to do, make those penetrations into the lane. Draw the fouls, get to the free throw line. And at the moment, just settling for these perimeter shots and they haven't been dropping at the moment. So I believe now Yudai Nishida will go to the free throw line here for two shots. Well, actually, I don't know that because he was trying to pass the ball there, so it could be a baseline ball, maybe. I think, yeah, they're going to call baseline ball possession now to Japan. Comes a handoff now with Saito. Kind of a love pass. Six on the shot clock now. Got to get something going. And Saito almost lost it. Pulls up for a Hail Mary three. Still can't get it. There's the offensive rebound. And Evans now will go to the free throw line here for two shots. Well, Luke Evans there did well to go into the paint and get that offensive rebound in. Again, anything just to keep Japan in this game. 
At the moment, only two points here in the first quarter. He makes the first free throw. Originally, she played a very good career this season so far here in the B League. And again, one of the more undersized power forwards. He makes the second one. Kind of playing for the Fighting Eagles in Nagoya. 30 years of age and Japan there much better. Forcing China into some turnovers, just giving this crowd something to get hyped about right now. So Japan will get the ball back. Well, Shaffin now looking to get the handoff here with Saito. Great defense here by China. Well, crosses over in the lane. Can he finish? Oh, baby! What a move, Sukhoi. Well, you got to love this guy, Takumi Saito. A bit of shake and bacon. Took that one in the lane. We'll kick this one out now, looking for a handoff. And we try and finish up. The three's up. The three is good. Well, China now starting to cook it up here from the perimeter. And that is just a beautiful play. There's Zhao Rei there. You can see that. Well, there's the behind the back pass. He's down the middle, back to Abby Schaff. And Schaff, a bit of contact, kicks in the corner. And Nishida had the shot. Down to Schaff, that reverse lap. Much better. Gets the end one. And Abby Schaff is going to go to free throw line now here to make a three point play. And this is much better play now for Japan. Getting those penetrations, making those dish offs, those kickouts. Getting better looks. Well, Avi Sheffin now, member also of the Japanese national team at the Tokyo Olympics. Doesn't make the free throw, though. And now we're under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Looking for a handoff now. And we go down low to the legend. Looking to post up here. Has the size. And here comes Dalton to kick it out. There's a three point. The three is good. Well, this is going to be a problem now for Japan because now they can't rely on double teaming. The post players of China start lighting it up for the perimeter. And here comes Takumi Saito now. Pump fakes, kicks out. Beautiful play. Nishida for three. Arigato Kozamas. You got to love the build up play there. Starts with Takumi Saito. Kicks that one out. To Nishida, and he nails it. And now China will get the last shot here in the first quarter. And has to get a shot of splits of defense in the lane, goes up, and he finishes the first quarter. And that's a tough, tough play there. Well, he has been unstoppable so far here in the first quarter. Well, Japan have started to improve their game, but at the same time, China have really just been the better team in this game. Well, China lead 27 to 11 against Japan here in the first quarter of the FIBA Basketball World Cup 2023 qualifiers. We'll take a look at some stats and show you some of the best highlights. And there you can see Japan shooting only one for 13 from the perimeter. That one three pointer coming from the sheet. China's only taken three three pointers, but look at that nine for 19 from within the rainbow. And here are some of the top plays. Wow, it's just too easy right now. I mean, Joe Chi, you can see that, just goes off to every offensive rebound, even his own shot, and he's able to go back up with that one. Well, Gua, that you can see just playing very much a lot of confidence is Tenketsu Harimoto. Banks that one. That is called the Bank of Harimoto. And again, you'll love the give and go play there. It's Joe Chi with a two handed jam. Throws it down. And the perimeter shooting, as we said. Only two three point field goals. They've only taken three so far, but China can light it up. You gotta love the build up there. Nishida hitting the only three pointer on the quarter so far for Japan.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you download the official Basketball World Cup app here, the FIBA Basketball World Cup app, where you can customize your experience, get all the important plays and highlights that matter to you the most, follow live stats from the journey of the qualifiers right to Japan, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Remember, that is the official FIBA Basketball World Cup app. You can download on your mobile tablet, your Android, or your smartphone. The FIBA Basketball World Cup official app. It looks like Joe Chi's going to come back into the lineup now. Second quarter. Looks like Ketsu Haramoto as well is back in here. Nishida now down the lane, gets stripped. Can he keep it alive? And Japan keep the ball alive now. Just going to turn the shot clock. Nishida step back, three point. Oh, baby! Well, Nishida starting to cook it up right now. That's the confidence that Japan needs at the moment. Just somebody to come in here and make those shots in. Just to give them a little bit more confidence and belief. Well, here comes the pick and roll now from China. It takes a deep, deep three, doesn't get it. And Japan now do a better job of securing the rebounds. And now Saito can push this one. There's a crossover, there's a kick out. Comes off one screen, there's the pick and pop. Well, Evans takes another three-pointer. It goes over the backboard. Well, it's much better from Japan, but again, they need some more people going in for those offensive rebounds. There's great defense there, but China again, looking to throw the ball down low to Joe Chi. See they want to go down low. Here comes the pick and roll. Again, right there. Smart play there from the Chinese guards. Oh, Zhao Ray, you can see that. Only seven seconds left in the shot clock. Right here, watch what he does. Fakes the screen. And Nishida gets caught there for a reach. Very smart play there by Zhao. Well, here comes the pick and roll now. Another foul has been called in Saito. Zhao Zhuwei there, you can see just getting a little bit frustrated, but already Japan picking up two team fouls. Let's go down low now. That's what China wants to go in the low post, just a battle. It's way too easy. Strong move. Just went to the basket. Now Tenketsu Haramoto here. And I think Japan has now figured out that it's going to be very tough to double team every time in the low block because well, Saito pulls up for three, doesn't get it. Goes out of bounds and it will be Japan ball. A bit of a fourth shot there by Saito, but again. Well, excuse me, it was Yuma Fuji actually. Well, Yuma Fuji checking into the game. And now 14 on the shot clock here for Japan. Tries to dish it off under the basket. Gets fouled very hard. And he's going to go to the free throw line now for two shots. Well, the foul is on Zhao Rei there, you can see. Well, that's again much better from Japan there. Trying to find Evans under the basket. There was a penetration of dish off there. What a pass by Nishida. Japan free throw. Well, Nishida right now is Japan's top scorer with six points. He has those two three-point field goals, but... As Evans missed the first free throw. He makes the second one. Cuts it down to a 14-point ball game here. And an offensive foul's been called. Well, Jao Ray there, you can see, just pushed off against Yuma Fuji. He's just starting to lose their discipline now, China. And Yuma Fuji trying to say to the official that he's been doing it all game long. Well, sets an illegal screen there, actually. That's a careless play there. 
by Jao Ren because he's been playing so well this evening for Japan. He's got to keep his composure. Well, they take a quick three point. The three is up, the three is in and out. No good. But Tenketsu Haramoto gets an offensive rebound. Tries another three point. The three is up. Three is good. Well, Japan now starting to light it up. And Coach Du Fang has to call timeout. As Coach Tom Havas, his players cut the deficit down to 11 points. As Furukawa san nails it. Japan only has three field goals made within the rainbow. Now three for 18 from the perimeter this evening. Two of those coming from Nishida. I think what Coach Dufang is saying to his players is that we cannot afford to get complacent. We need to be clever. And there's a perimeter shooting. There was the offensive rebound by Tenketsu Haramoto. And there was the board reversal and a quick three-point shot. Sugoi, you got to love it. Well, when Japan stopped making the perimeter shots, it's going to be raining threes right now here in Sendai. Furukawa-san. Now China, well, the one thing that China's been doing very well this season is getting the ball in the low block and just playing the post-up game here against Japan. On to the basket, doesn't get it. They've been getting a lot of offensive rebounds. Jiaji Wei thought about taking the three-point, doesn't take it. They go down low now, has to back his way in the low block, nails it, nothing but that. I mean, that is Simmons. All right, pops it right to him. What was he thinking? Well, Taketsu Haramoto just had a blunder moment there, threw it right to the Chinese player. Well, there's the pick and pop now, under the basket, throws it down. Well, Joe Chi with a two-handed jam. Haramoto now looking for a handoff. Yuma Fuji on the ball, run the 10 on the shot clock. Fuji now looking to isolate. Fuji kicks out. Haramoto gets rejected. Joe Chi with a block, and now China can push this one. Well, they got numbers. Almost turning over the ball, is all over the place. These two teams are just. And now China able to secure the ball. Now they lead this one by 15 points, and it's amazing how quickly the momentum of the game can change. Jochi now left wide open. Why not take the three pointer? Doesn't get it. Well, Japan will be very happy if Jochi is going to take those shots all night long. Evans now looking to kick this out to somebody. Finds Tenketsu Haramoto. Haramoto lost it, turns it over. And now China can push this one. He's got Jochi to his right. Finds Jochi. Jochi lays it up. A little bit of showtime. Jungwa Lancho. Well, Joe Chi now has 12 points. He's 6 for 10 from the field, and now it's a 17-point lead to China. In the lane now. Spins around, goes for a layup, doesn't get it. Tries to follow up with an offensive rebound. And well, now they're going to make some changes, it looks like. Yuki Togashi is going to come in with Makoto Hiyajima. Kosuke Takeuchi, the veteran. Well, Takeuchi, as we said before, has a twin brother. Both of them featured in the 2006 FIBA World Championship that was hosted in Japan, in which they went up against Doug Nowitzki in Germany. The year that Doug Nowitzki lost in the NBA Finals to the Miami Heat. So, again, what an experience that was for the Takeuchi brothers. 
A double crossover now in the lane, goes up. The follow-up by Joe T. And this guy, again, is taking this game over. Well, he is unstoppable. And now it's a 19-point lead, 28 points in the paint to China. Only two so far to Japan. Tagashi comes off the screen. Tagashi now looking for a dish off. That's Tugashi now. Another kick out. Chambers now. He tries a three-pointer. Aki Chambers nails it. Well, that was definitely needed for Japan's confidence. Well, Japan really ha having to work for every single three-point field goal, but at the moment, they got to do down the other end defensively against China. Cross is over now in the lane. Well, the foul has been called. I think Japan's trying to say that he was passing the ball, not shooting it, but we will find out what the officials think. Joe Chi now gets the ball in down. An offensive foul's been called. I don't know if they've called that on Joe Chi, if they've called that on number 17, Sun Ming Hui. I think they've called that on Sun Ming Hui, so that's his first personal foul of the game. We get the ball down to Yuki Togashi now. Now Hiyajima gives this one up, gets a handoff. Tugashi now looking at the and crosses over. Steps back, takes a long two-point shot, doesn't get it. Japan securing offensive rebound, turn it over. And Takeuchi, sorry, Evans there. Well, Evans tried to secure the rebound, but in the end, went out of bounds. Crossover now in the lane, goes up, lays it up off the backboard. Well, this guy playing with a lot of confidence now as Guai Lun. He now moves up to nine points. It's now an 18 point lead here to China. That's Takeuchi. Takeuchi looking for a handoff. Gets to Hiyajima. Well, Hiyajima throws that one out of bounds. Well, Han comes back into the game. That is the veteran given the next generation, or the current generation, if you like. Now Japan going into a zone here, and again, just too easy, but they come up with a rebound now. Tugashi gives this one up, finds Hiyajima. Hiyajima in the lane, lays it up, and that's much better. It's Takeuchi, oh sorry, excuse me, Evans. Evans runs a fast break, and that's much better now from Japan. Getting out in transition. And you can see they're putting Aki Chambers at the top of this 1-2-2 two, two zone. And China just needs to move the ball and get open looks, and they throw it down low now to Han. Kicks this one out. Turns it over, and now we got Tsugashi here. Tsugashi here, makes a bit of contact, no foul called. Keeps it live, and he turns it over. Now we got numbers, he's got Han to him. Han in the lane, Han gets fouled. And he'll go to the free throw line for two shots. Ravi Schaffer now comes back into the game. He gives Evans a bit of a breather. China free throw at the line, number 55. Two shots. Oh, Han again, a very experienced player. Again, one of the fan favorites in the CBA. Well, originally comes from Dali in China. 34 years of age stands. He's only played at one team in his whole career since 2007. And that's with the Liaoning Flying Leopards. 
Doesn't get the second free throw, but again, you can see China just going off to every single shot. Now Zhao Ji Wei comes back into the game here for China. Now the full court pressure here. And Zachy Chambers needs to come back and help. Put the ball in the hands of Yuki Tagashi now. Well, just under two and a half to go here in the second quarter. And at the moment, China very much leading the way in this game. Chambers, he's made one three, takes another one, and he's fouled on the three-pointer. And Chambers is now going to go to the three-point, sorry, the free-throw line here for three free shots. Well, Guo Ai Lun commits another foul, so now Anthony Chambers will get some more free throws. Again, Japan just needs to find the confidence right now in that game. You can see at the moment the defense is becoming very, very physical from the Chinese national team. They're currently in the B League at the moment. Aki Chambers is averaging 10 points and three rebounds per game. Currently playing for the Gunmore Crane Thunders. Well, last season was playing in Yokohama. Also played for the Chiba Jets for two seasons. So he makes it two for three. We also played for Sun Rocket Shibuya for three years as well. So, again, a very experienced B League player. Number 21, Poo. Here comes the ball movement again. Japan staying in the zone defense. Trying to force China to shoot the ball from the perimeter. Well, there's a three-point shot. They don't get it. Shafa secures the rebound. And now they can push this one. Hiyajima fakes it. Goes off the backboard. Well, Makoto Hiyajima said. And the one player Japan just wants to get going at the moment. And he can start to cook it up in the perimeter. It's only a 13-point deficit. Zaki Chambers here trying not to pick up another foul. Joe Chi now under the basket. And another foul has been called. Now, if that's on Makoto Hiyajima, that's his third personal foul. He's going to have to go to the bench probably 129 to go here in the second quarter. The one thing for the Chinese national team is just to keep getting fouled and keep getting to the free throw line. Again, having to step up and make these free throws. Well, he makes the second one. It's now a 14 point lead. There you can see the traveling fans from China. Japan now going to the bench and just bringing some more options up because Makoto Hiyajima. And then you can see Okada from the Shinsu Brave Warriors, 23 years of age. Yashi now throws it away. Well, possibly went back to back court there, I think, but again, state of this game and how fast it's going. And you can see Joe Chi with a beautiful move. Well, one dribble spin around and then a baby hook. Sugashi now goes behind the back. Under a minute to go here. Splits the defense. Oh, a no look pass and throws that one away. And Coach Tom Havas there. Well, you can see that his team played spurts of good basketball, but then at the end, just turned the ball over too easy. Chambers now still staying at the top of that zone. They try another three point. The three is up. It's no good, but it's another offensive rebound. And Joe Chi just makes it look so easy. An 18 point lead now. As Okada has to bring the ball up here for Japan. Back to Tugashi. 
Yeah, she steps back, takes a three-pointer, doesn't get it. Takuchi fighting for the rebound. Kind of thought about taking the three. Goes out of bounds, but it will be Japan ball now. Well, eight seconds left in the half. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Might as well turn it off. Now Joe Peng comes back into the game here for China. Well, he was phenomenal the last time these two teams met in the FIBA Asia Cup qualifiers. Here's some big three-point shots. In Japan, you want to put the ball in the hands of Yuki Tsugashi. Tsugashi now goes right at the defense, splits, kicks out. Schaffer in the lane. Abby Schaffer gets the roll right at the end of the first half. But China still leads this one by 16 points over Japan here in the FIBA Basketball World Cup qualifiers. There's a team who hosted it back in 2019 against a team that will host it in 2023. He has been unstoppable in this game so far. Joe Chi, I mean, he's been phenomenal. And right now, Coach Tom Havas needs to go in and find his players to get some inspiration. Because at the moment, the 6 for 11 from, the, from inside the rainbow, they shot 23 point field goals already. And they've only made four of them. And you can see Japan getting out rebounded 27 to 16. They do have one more assist for that matter, which is quite interesting. But Nishida's that top score with only six. Jochi has 18, leading all scores in the game. And right now, Tom Havas just stepping into this role now, taking over before being the Japanese national team for the women. So no experience for him leading Katsuki's five. Well, here are some of the top plays now from this game. You can see Joe Chi has just been very much textbook play from here in the low block. I mean, just doing exactly what he wants in the low blo block. Tenketsu Haramoto started things early here for Japan, but again, just trying to get those players to step in and step up at the moment. You got to think as well, I mean, look, China really has enjoyed a bit of transition, a bit of hop court basketball, but they've also haven't really gone to their perimeter shooting as much. They've only made a few three-point field goals, but they can, and I mean, they really can shoot it from downtown. And Nishida has hit two three-pointers already for Japan. But again, that's something from their game they need more of. I think Tom Havas now knowing that his team will be at the World Cup. And there you can see Nishida again in the corner. That's exactly what they need. And Joe Chi is simply unstoppable in the low block. I mean, that's the problem Japan has. Is how do they take care of Joe Chi? Down low, how do they make it tough for him? How do they get shots up? Because defensively, Joe Chi is a great rim protector. And you can see he follows up. With two handed putbacks. That's the kind of player Joe Chi is. I mean, he's end to end stuff. Well, credit to Jack, the Chinese back I mean, they're able to get out in transition. Oh, is Evans with a layup. And the fake pass there by Makoto Hiyajima. Again, Joe Chi just effortlessly getting the offensive rebounds. And we'll be back, ladies and gentlemen, in the next 12 minutes. Presenting your people and their dreams, the colorful faces in the streets, 
the screaming fans in the stands. It's time to make your move. All eyes on you, all hope, all heart. Because when you win, you win for all. Look so easy. Yeah, everything makes it look easy. I'm glad we're getting to see this this Jokic. Look to Klava. Klava, nice bank plus. Into it, he heard that Gomez. Oh my words! What a move! What a put drive initially. Attack the basket, then the bounce pass came. Nice job by Klava. Now we back out to you, Jan Leon. Leads his man on the floor. Rebound. Look at this move. Nigeria, 10 of them have scored. None as emphatically as that. Is that a Nigerian poster? Yeah, it is. We have walked this land for a long time. We know how far we've gone, and we're sure of how far we can go. Unity is not just a word here. It's not just a spirit in this sport. It's the way we all move. We are proud of our art, country, family, language and culture. We are united by basketball. Welcome to FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup 2022.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, now to the second half of this FIBA Basketball World Cup qualified match between our host Japan and the team that's been playing much better, China, of course. Well, China have been, again, looking more comfortable between these two teams, getting out in transition, making the most of the size and physicality in the low block. And at the moment, it has at times been a good game, but it really has been one side. There you can see Du Feng, a perfectionist, when coaching his players. Well, Japan has shot 23 point field goals. And they've only made four of them. And at the moment, it's been live and die from the three point line, and they need to get other players to step in and step up right now. Home crowd here at Sendai. Yuji is a sellout here in the B League. The B League now becoming one of the more popular international professional leagues here. Which is seeing featuring some players, of course, from the top teams, Chiba Jets, where Yuki Togashi plays. And she led them to their first championships last year, beating his teammate Makoto Hiyajima and the Utsunami of Rex. Well, in Japan, 
The B League is very big, and in China, the CBA, the Joe Chi now taking a talents out to Australia now playing in the NBL. And China now will get the first possession here in the second half as they lead this one by 16 points over Japan. Well, here comes the pick and roll sequence, and that's something that's worked very well for China here early on. Goes down the lane, does it again and again. Same result. Joe Chi with an offensive rebound. And they've got to try and stop him from getting the boards. And it's always going to be tough for Japan, but once he gets that offensive rebound, he's not giving the ball up, and they're going to have to foul him very quickly. Well, it's on Makoto Hiyajima. That's his fourth foul. They're going to have to sub him out right away. So now Nishida comes back in the game, their top scorer. Japan, number 19, Nishida. Get the ball in down now to Joe Chi. China now just trying to get the ball into the big fella. Has to force up a tough shot. And again, they're working, they're doing everything they can to keep him off the offensive rebounds. But somehow, some way, Joe Chi still gets the ball. And you got to credit Luke Evans there. He's doing everything he can to keep him off the rebounds. But again, it's just mission impossible at the moment here for Japan. Nishida now lost his balance, kicks this one out to Tagashi. He's got to shoot it. Forces up a tough one. A 24 second violation. And here comes the double team now. And China have done very well at breaking down the full court press here from the Japanese defense. Download to Joe Chi. Joe Chi all the way. And it's too easy. This guy, I mean, he's going to finish the game with 40 points if they keep throwing the ball down low to him. I mean, he's a one player right now that Japan must double team. Because you can see right now, any one on one scenario, I mean, he's got good ball handling skills, good agility skills. Tagashi now kicks out. Nishida's made two three pointers. Doesn't get this one. Matthew Chambers trying to fight for the rebound. It's kind of the shot they wanted. They want to get the penetration to kick out to the sheeter in the corner, but he's only just got back in the game, so. And look how easy it was for him to get the ball in the zone there. I mean, he didn't even have to flash that hard. I mean, who Jin Cho that just camped himself right in the middle of the zone and the pass was too easy. Now it's Ketsu Haramoto has the ball in his hands. Forces up a three-point, doesn't get it, and goes out of bounds. And now top of the zone now, looking to isolate. Down to Joe Chi, under the basket. And now he'll go to the free throw line here for two shots. Well, Joe Chi there, you can see one of magnificent careers had, having played for the Houston Rockets, where he did come back to the CBA. Taking his talents over to Australia to play in the NBL. And Joe Chi, of course, comes from Xinjiang in north of China. Only 25 years of age. He started his career with the Flying Tigers back in 2014. And when he returned from the NBA, went straight back to for two seasons. But now he's enjoying life in southeast Melbourne, Phoenix. Japan there almost turned the ball over again. Nishida now finally is able to draw a foul. And it will be baseline ball now to China. Eight, 
That's well, much better there from Nishida, making that penetration just, you know, trying to force China to commit those fouls is much better on the Japanese offense. They have really tried to settle for as many perimeter shots as possible. And Abby Schaffer now is back in the game. Get a handoff here with Sugashi. Chambers finds Schaffer. Schaffer pump fakes, goes to reverse layup, doesn't get it. Goes out of bounds, but it will be Japan ball here. With three seconds left on the clock. I think that Joe Chi is trying to say, I think it came up with him. Well, this Chambers, the penetration. Schaffer, the reverse layup. I'll have to see that in slow motion, but again, three seconds left here. They find Schaffer now. Schaffer's got to go up with it. Schaffer way off the mark. Now he can push this one, crosses over in the lane, now fades away. Doesn't get it. And now Sugashi here can try and push this one. Sugashi now able to draw the foul. And it will be a sideline ball here to Japan. Well, Yugi Togashi, great story about him is that he went to the United States. He was originally from Niigata up in the north of Japan. Went to the United States for high school. Led his high school team to a state championship, but did not get any Division I champion, uh, offers or scholarships. In the end, turned pro in Japan. Spent a brief time in the Summer League. Led the Chiba Jets last season to their first ever B League championship. Historical three game series against the Utsunami of Rex. As we mentioned, we went up against Makoto Hiyajima, who's currently on the bench right now. And Japan now stand his own. China, again, all they got to do is move the ball. Is Jochi, why not? Shot at the top of the key, doesn't get it. I think they're going to call a foul now. I think the foul is on Takeuchi. Well, the foul is on Tenketsu Haramoto, sorry. In the lane now, doesn't get it. And Aki Chambers comes up with a rebound, and now. They can go in transition, hangs in the air, beautiful move, doesn't get it. The foul has been called. Well, Japan, they're unable to make the most of their transition, but they're going to put, again, a little bit more full-court pressure. It's Nishida there, trying to go full blast there in transition, but was unable to lay it up. Left wide open, Joe Pang for three, doesn't get it. He hit five of those last time he played against Japan in the FIBA Asia Cup qualifies in China. Follow up with an offensive rebound. And at the moment, this could turn out to be a 30 point game if we're not careful. As who now moves up to 13 points. Haramoto now crosses over, spins out, goes in, beautiful move, and gets rejected. And now China will push this one one more time in transition. Spins around, reverse layup, doesn't get it. And now Haramoto will push it. Nishida in transition, Nishida all the way, can't get it. I think we got to play it down. That could be bad there for China. As Joe Chi is holding on to his ankle. Joe Chi went down. It appears to be in quite a lot of pain. The Chinese bench have all got up just to see if he's okay. And again, I'm not sure what happened there. He's holding on to his right ankle. The Furukawa and Saito come back. Now here's a replay. Haramoto goes up. 
Jochi comes out. Oh my lord, right there. Twists the ankle. That yeah, looks like a. It's going to be quite a bad sprain. Hopefully he is okay. Well, hopefully Joe Chi will be okay, but that looks like a very nasty sprain. Definitely came down and twists his ankle there. Dufang now trying to rally his players and just to the medical staff are gonna have to carry him off because the way that he landed on his ankle looks like it was very, very painful. He has had a fabulous game this evening, Joe Chi. He's had 24 points, 12 rebounds. Arguably been the best player in this game. And you can see fans on both sides applauding him. It did look like a very nasty sprain. Get it, Nishida with a big rebound. He almost throw it away, but it will be Japan. possession to Japan. Oh, Jiao Chi Wei there, you can see again. Ooh, lots of defensive pressure. Just over five and a half to go here. On the five and a half, excuse me. Here in the third quarter. Fuku Kawa now splits the defense. Finds Harimoto, shakes and bakes, finds Fuku Kawa. He's made one three, takes another one. Doesn't get it. And now China, and now Joe Chi, but with a 24 point lead now over Japan. I'm just trying to slow this one down. Only 10 the shot clock now. Crosses over, goes into the banger, can't get it. Goes out of bounds, and it will be China Bull. Well, Takeuchi there tried to go in for the rebound, but again, you can see already still with China, the size and physicality that they have in this team. Rebounding is always going to be a tough job here. Well, Zhang Jiwei now checks out of the game as Guo Ailun comes back in for China. That's one luxury that Dufang has with so many great players coming from the CBA is that he can rotate his squad in and out as much as possible. Makes a penetration, hangs it, gets rejected. Well, what a block. Now Furukawa swings this one down low. Takeuchi now looking to give this one up. Comes off one screen now, hesitates in the lane. This shot, beautiful play, and he lays it up. Well, that is much better, and that is what Japan have been waiting for. The hesitation step there from Takumi Saito. He comes a crossover, and again, it's too easy. Beautiful move there by Jao Rei. Again, fast break here from the Japanese in transition. Lays it up again on the Shida. All of a sudden, Japan starting to turn up the tempo here in this game. With over four minutes to go here in the third quarter. Tries to come off one screen, kicks out. There's a three point. The three is up. No good. Goes out of bounds. Again, there you can see Hu Jin Cho there. Just doing enough to stop Takeuchi from getting a rebound. A beautiful penetration. And then the dish shot, but gets annihilated in the process, but it's worth it in the end. He got the field goal. So 
China now with a fresh 14 on the shot clock. He's down the middle now, kicks this one out. Now on the five steps back, takes the three, doesn't get it. This time, big rebound. I take Ketsu Haramoto. Finds Haramoto now. And here's a hand up with Nishida. Here's a pick and roll now as Takeuchi throws it away. Kind of keep it alive. The ball is on the ground. Well, China now. We've got numbers in transition. Almost turns it over. And it hits a foot, so it will be a fresh reset of the shot clock, and it will be possession back to China. Well, this man is a legend, as we've said time and time again. He's just one of those players. I mean, he can fly as well. Well, Xu Jie now checks into the game for the first time. Well, Xu Jie was playing a lot of minutes for China. Back at the clock bubble for the FIBA Asia Cup qualifiers. Playing as pro boss right now in the CBA and Dong Guan. There's a down low now. Han now looking to isolate, kicks this one out to try another three point. The three is up. Three is good. Well, tucks it away. Well, Kuai Lun hits another big one, which puts China back up by 25. There's a penetration. There's a kick out. Had the shot, didn't take it. Haramoto now back to Nishida. Nishida pulls up for a big three. And Arigato Gozamas. Nishida San from no man's land. And that is a deep three pointer by Nishida. And that is his third trade ball of the night. Again, Japan stay in the zone against China. China has started to hit some primitive shots. One now fades away from the mid range. This guy is unstoppable. Well, he is feeling it right now. Wai Lun feels like he can make every shot that he takes. Comes up one screen. Well, Fudukawa tries a three pointer, doesn't get it way off the mark. Now China with a 24 point lead. He's between the legs. Well, he's hit his last mid range. Hits another one. Whoa. What the name's a shot. Guo Island. Guo Island Cho. This guy has come ready to play. That's only the 13th out now for China. And they're going to make a double change here. Well, I have Dureshti now checks into the game. And Evans comes back along with Aki Chambers. Kills the screen now. It's now a 26 point ball game. Steps back in the mid range with a float up. That is Sugoi. Well, what a move by Saito. And he put a bit of wasabi on that one and it floated in the air. It came down nothing but net. Down the lane now. Well, they don't react to it too slow. It hits the front rim. Maybe secure the rebound. And now Saito has to give this one up to Tenketsu Haramoto. Back to Saito now, looking to pull the screen. Saito pulls up. Back to Evans, bumps in the lane. But Ikate, what a block there by Han. And now China can push this one. Warren now in transition off the backboard, doesn't get it. Another offensive rebound. Shoot yeah now. Has to take this one in. Has to kick it out in the corner. Pump fakes goes baseline. But blocked by Aki Chambers. A jump ball's been called. I think the possession's gonna go to Japan because China had the possession at the beginning of the third quarter. So now Japan will get the last shot here of the third quarter.
Substitution timeout, number seven. Japan now, gonna try to dribble this one down for the last shot. They get the ball in the hands of the shit. Well, they're giving it up, up now. Entries down the middle. Kicks this one out to Ketsu Harimoto. In and out, doesn't get it. I think the official set. Probably went with the jump ball call. Well, that's a call in the possession. I think they're going to decide what happened there because it looked like the reason they didn't call it travel is because the jump ball was going to be called, which means the possession is going to have to go to China with a few seconds left, which then will mean Japan. So they're going to review right now to see how much time is left. But this could go in favor for Japan because it means they'll get the first possession of the fourth quarter now. But now they got to see how much time is left when the jump ball was called. So I think they're just going to go back and look at the timing. If I'm correct, there might be like between one and two seconds left when I think he got caught in the tangle there. Here's a loose ball, it's right there. It's probably about... It's tough to say when they want to call the jump ball scenario. Looks like they're going to put 1.5 seconds left. China possession. Japan will then will get the first possession of the fourth quarter. So China now, 1.5 seconds left. Have to throw it up. Well, five second violations five called. Second violation. So now Japan, well, Zhou Peng didn't have an option there. Du Feng well, looks very calm, but again, deep down, you know, he must be very infuriated. Because now Japan, they're gonna get the first possession of the fourth quarter as well. So 1.5 seconds, Aki Chambers now will inbound this. Japan now must be a little bit of time here for a dribble, possibly. Shoots a fadeaway, doesn't get it. And ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the third quarter, China now lead this one by 24 points over Japan, 64 to 40 here. And this FIFA Basketball World Cup qualification matchup. And we're live here in Sendai, Japan. And we'll show you some stats and some highlights. You gotta think right now for China, it's been a good game for them, just playing some beautiful basketball, getting out of transition, moving the ball. And they've just been able to get around the court, but I mean, 
Well, Joe Chi, hopefully he's okay, because remember, he went down with a very nasty ankle sprain. And he finished the game with a double-double, of course. A very dominant performance. I mean, look, look how easy that is. A simple flash to the high post, get the ball. An easy layup. Well, that was a smooth move, but they needed more, than, more from this from Japan. Just those penetrations, kickoffs there. And the Sheeta here running the transition. Much better play. Perimeter shooting from China, from High Guadalupe. Nishida from no man's land. That is a tough, tough play there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you download the official FIBA World Cup qualifying official app. You can download it on your smart tablet, your Android, or your smartphone. Customize your experience, get all your favorite plays and stats that matter to you most. All the news right up from the qualifiers till we get to Japan, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Remember, that is the official FIBA Basketball World Cup app. Download it on your phone now. Well, 64 to 40, Japan now will get the first possession. Back to a pass. Well, that is, would have been an amazing play, but couldn't connect with it. So now China here with a 24-point lead. Japan stay in the zone. All they have to do is move the ball, and there's the open look from the perimeter. He's made a couple threes tonight, and he makes another one. This guy is cash money. Well, Kawhi Lun simply is taking this game over. He now has 19 points. They take a three-point from downtown. They don't get it. Secure the rebound. Well, now again, China just needs to move the ball. Another three-pointer. Guo Ailun, Chai This guy, well, he loves the game. I mean, he thinks right now every shot he takes will go in the basket. Malay now tries to dish off pass, doesn't get it. Now run the five on the shot clock, fakes it now, takes a wild shot, doesn't get it. And now China can push this once a 30 point lead. And now they put the ball in the hands of Guai Lun, he's got 22 points. Tries to split the defense, tries to keep it alive. And Japan comes up with loose ball, now they can push. Has a spin around now. Off the backboard, fades away. Wild shot. Again, now China. Again, they want to build the deficit as much as possible because when they play the return leg, when they go to China, they don't want to be in a situation where they have to lose a head to head hit. Guai Lun alley -oop. And it's too easy, but he follows up. He can't get it. Now Japan can push this one. And left wide open, takes a three point in the corner. Three is up, the three is good. Well, the three now from Yuma Fuji San. It looks like Abby Schaffer just took a bit of a shot there. Hopefully, he's okay. I'm not sure if he took a shot to the head or. Hopefully, he is okay. There's Schaffer right there. Looks like he got an elbow from his own teammate, actually. It's now a 27 point ball game as Takeuchi has to come back in the game. It's Kawhi Lin now looking to isolate here. We're looking to go pick and roll, picks it between his legs. Shaking bait time. 
Makes a bit of contact. Really going to call an offensive foul this time. So possession is going to go back to Japan. Well, that was a shake and bake there. I think he just goes in with his shoulder. And that's a right call there because he just goes in a little too aggressively. Has a penetrate now. Pump fake looking to kick this one out. With a floater in the lane and nails that one. Luke Evans. And he's had a really tough night this evening. He now moves up to seven points, six rebounds as well. And Evans again getting a taste of international basketball, realizing now how tough it can be going up against a team like China. Makes a penetration, hangs in the air off the backboard, doesn't get it. Now they can push this one. Double crossover now. This is the problem with Japan here. It's the movement off the ball that doesn't help them at the moment. A lot of isolation. Pulls up for a deep three. Doesn't get it. And then gets a knock on the rebound. And it will be possession to Japan on the baseline. Chao Ji Wei checks back into the game here for China. Another four, Xi Wei Zhao. The foul is recorded for Zhao Ji Wei, and that's now the 13th foul here for China. As they lose this one by 25 points, and it will be a fresh 14 on the shot clock for Japan. Takes the screen now. Bit of contact, almost lost his balance. Finds Zachy Chambers. Chambers can't get it. Now China here. And as mentioned before, they'll try to build on their momentum as much as possible. Because in the return leg, when they play in China, China don't want to be in a situation where they have to play for a head-to-head -head against Japan. So if they can keep it this big of a lead, it's going to be very comfortable for them. As now Makoto Hiyajima comes back into the game for Japan. Looks like Joe Pang's going to come back in for China. Contact now kicks this one at the Zhao Ji Wei. It'll take a three. The three is up. It's no good. Another offensive rebound. And well, that's been the story of the night this evening. Shakes and bakes, crosses over. What a pass. Turns it over. And now Japan has got a four on two hit. Back to Evans. Evans gets the M1. And he's now going to go to the free throw line here for a three point play. Took that one in transition. Now he's going to be called on Zhang Zhilin. Evans now. Now moves up to nine points. He can go up to ten if he can hit this free throw. Makes a three-point play. Here comes the pick and roll now. Zhao Ji Wei gives this one up. Now we're on the six in the shot clock. Got to get something going to the basket. Finds the top of the key. And goes out of bounds. That's a 24 second violation. Well, that's the best passage of defense from Japan in this game. As now Han comes back in along with Guo Lun. Well, Guai Lin has been the best backcourt player in this game. I mean, every time he has the ball in his hands, 
You can see he's such a creative fossil player. Can create his own shot, can catch and shoot. And again, just when you think China goes off the radar in the international basketball zone, just shows how much talent they have here in the CBA. Kiyajima, traveling violation. Koto Hiyajima that tried the same move that he had in the first half, but tried to fake the pass there, but the turnover has been called. Comes off one screen now. Trying to get a kick out there, but realizes he's going to shoot it. A oh, beautiful pass there in the corner. Doesn't get it. Now Hiyajima comes up with it. Kicks this one out now. And Mackie Chambers to get a good ball reversal. Evans tries a three point in the corner. Three is up, no good. Takuchi with the offensive rebound. Tries to penetrate, draws a foul. And that's the 15,000. Now he's going to go to the free throw line here for two shots. Hasn't played many minutes in this game so far, but again, did feature for China quite often during the 2019 FIBA World Cup qualifiers. Another opportunity for him to get off the mark. He makes both free throws now. With just over four and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. Now under 10, the shot clock now. Han tries to muscle his way in, doesn't get it. Chambers comes up with a loose ball. Well, Chambers, he's made one three tonight. Well, doesn't get that one as it goes over the backboard. Off now. They find Han now. Han's had a tough night. Tries to spin around. Tries to muscle his way in. Gets fouled and he'll go to the free throw line now for two shots. He's very quick, of course, with 34 years of age and very, very strong as well. Well, if you saw him back in the 2017 FIBA Asia Cup in Lebanon, I mean, he was running the fast break and throwing jams down. Such a legendary player in Chinese basketball. He makes the first free throw. Well, he's a one-team career player in the CBA. He doesn't get the second free throw, though. And now we're under four minutes to go here. Japan trying to build into depth as much as possible. Under the basket, beautiful pass there. They come down to a 19-point ball game. Now remember, Japan, you want to keep cutting into his depths as much as possible because, you know, the, look at the look on Du Fang's face. As if to say, are you serious? Is that the kind of defense we're going to play? And Abdu Salam now looks like he's going to come out of the game. They can see so far both teams with 11 turnovers each. And look at this for it's been very unlike China in this game so far. And Kawhi Lun, I think, as well. Both players fell asleep in that situation. But nonetheless, Abdu Salam getting the uh, coaching, lecturing there from Dufang.
And now Ruby China Bull here with 340 to go in the fourth quarter. As right now they lead by 19 points against Japan in this opening game. And now the J Japanese putting on that full court pressure. As Kawhi Lun specifically brought back into the game to take care of this pressure from the Japanese defense. And Joe Peng had to give this one up. And Makoto Hijima does have 4,000 all the way. That guy is going to work. Well, that's a tough, tough move. Well, he took on the entire defense. Well, Jiao there, you can see he moves up to 10 points, but that was the move of the game. As you took Ashi's back in the game here for Japan. Ashi Chambers in the left. He goes in. Tough play there by Ashi Chambers. And now we're under three minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Kawhi Lin now crosses over, takes the mid range. Well, what the mean to shirt. Kawhi Lin from Kaohsiung Renshini. Nice to meet you. This guy is cooking it up tonight. Sugashi now comes up one screen. He can isolate, puts it between his legs. And Japan now have a few seconds left. Takeuchi, well, sorry, Evans. Has to force it up, doesn't get it. I think they're gonna call a foul there against China. And the foul is gonna be called on Zhao Jiwei, number four. Just aggressively boxing out. Kosuke Takeuchi on the rebound, so it will be two shots. Third personal. Takeuchi, two shots. Well, the only word I can use to describe this man's basketball career, a couple of words, is excellence and longevity. Can he make it to 2023? That would be impressive. Remember, 2006, we're going right back to 2006 at the FIBA World Championships in Japan. He was playing with his twin brother and having to defend Dirk Nowitzki in the group stages. China now, looking to finish this game off strong as Joe Payne goes down the middle. Get a contact, and that is too easy. He just went down the middle, gave a little sweet little float up. So Gashi now down the middle, kicks this one out to Aki Chambers. He tries another three-point shot, way off the mark. Now we're under two minutes to go here. Cross is over now. This has been the Kawhi Lun Show. Oh my lord, this guy is unbelievable. Well, Japan calls timeout now as they trail by 21 points. Now top of the key here, China. 
Oh, Guai Lin now behind the back. I mean, this guy is just unbelievable. Can he get it? Doesn't get it, but in the end, the one-handed jam throws it down. Well, this has been China's night. They have simply been excellent there as Hu Jin Cho with the follow-up. And Yuki Tagashi from downtown Ayaso Minasai. Well, Yuki Togashi with a big three-pointer, but they have needed that all game long this evening. And here's the excellent play from Guai Lun. Bit of contact goes up with it. Can't get it. It's out of bounds, and it will be Japan Bull now with 105 to go here. Yashi now gives this one up to Tenketsu Haramoto. Crosses over, pulls up in the mid range. Togashi san Sugoi. Oh, Yuki Togashi, that is Muzukashi right there. Tough play from Yuki Togashi. He just hasn't been able to look for his own shot this evening. And a player that you heavily rely on to get those shots up. Guadalupe now. Takes another one, doesn't get it. And saves it. And Japan want to keep building into deficit. It's 16 points. And again, the head to head will be key here. It's a little about taking a three point. It doesn't take it. Bit of a foul. And he's going to go to the free throw line now. Very personal. At the line, Otaba. Two shots. But it makes both free throws now. It cuts the deficit down. And China are going to make one last change here. The last 15.2 seconds is Guai Lun. Well, Guai Lun, for me, has been the MVP in this game. 24 points, four rebounds, and one assist. As Yuto Kata makes both free throws. Togashi said, Sukoi. Look at this move here. The step back. Well, Ayasu Minasai. Yuki Togashi said, Arigato Gozaimas. Sukoi. You gotta love this guy. Last 15.2 seconds here for China. They'll probably try and get one more basket here if they can. Well, no foul called. Well, here comes the last play. Crosses over now in the lane. There's a kick out. Wide open three. Well, they don't get it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of this one, China win it 79 to 63 over Japan. Well, Guai Lun, the MVP in this game. It was unbelievable, his performance. And Coach Dufang probably would have expected his team to come out with a victory. Coach Tom Havas doesn't begin his career with a victory as head coach of the Japanese national team. Japan did show some signs of making some form of a comeback, but in the end, China's display 
was just very, very strong. Here are the stats from the game there. You can see China very, very good, of course. Only 5 of 17 from the perimeter. Japan 7 for 35, but 28 for 56 from within the rainbow. And the reboundings, look at that, 53 to 34. Both teams with 17 assists. And the reboundings just says it all. It really just was one-sided in that sense. Here are the highlights from the game, of course. Again, Joe Chi, another big performance, but he went down with a very bad sprained ankle. Hopefully, he's okay. Joe Chi, of course, one of the top players in international basketball. Again, it's that kind of game this evening. I mean, Japan really did struggle to get it going, of course, from the perimeter. In that stage, China took full control of it. Just being able to dominate on both ends of the floor. Well, Nishida had a decent game, of course. Made some big three-pointers for Japan in this game. The only game I learned was just too good for them in the backcourt. There was another three from Nishida. Shows you the range they had in that game, but just too little, too late if you think about it. And Saito there with a beautiful fadeaway. There's a lot of good players in this Japanese national team, but you know, when they have to match up with a team like China, you must have a, a good depth of players that can play in the low block for you. I mean, Abby Schaffer is a good post player, but Jamie, we've seen him play the power forward role a lot in the Japanese national team. There's a transition play as Evans gets a layup. But again, it was that kind of evening. Zaki Chambers there. And he dished down low to Kosuke Takeuchi. Play there. Zhao there just going to work. And Yuki Togashi said that's what they missed tonight. They needed it to be the Yuki Togashi show. These Japanese players now, they applaud their fans up. The Chinese players show their respects to the fans as well. Well, these two teams will play again tomorrow, and they'll play a little bit later in the day. And right now, more games to come here. Yeah. 